Hello, everyone, and thank you for checking in. Today, the conversation topic is commodity codes. Yeah, classification, HS classification. And you see it in the news all the time if you're into customs. So I thought I'd take this opportunity and kind of talk you through what a commodity code is, that they are global construct to give you an example of how the HS is structured, um, tell you about what a nomenclature is and give you some tips on how to make sure that your codes are actually correct. So what are these commodity codes, these classification codes that you need for customs classification. Well, governments and customs authorities, they use these commodity codes to essentially track goods and ensure compliance with rules and regulations. They're made up typically of about six harmonized digits, although for exports, these can be made up to eight digits, for imports, usually 10 digits. And then in some countries, more than that, Germany, for example, we've got an 11th digits purely for national reasons. Mm -hmm. Commodity codes serve several purposes, including the identification of the product, the determination of third country duty rates and preferential duty rates and the collection of statistical data as well. They are also used to inform about trade policies and to enforce such controls, for example, quotas, anti-dumping duties and subsidies. They are, however, a global construct. So commodity codes are actually based on the harmonized system that you know, might know them as HS codes. Um, and this harmonized system has been developed by the World Customs Organization. The system identifies the first six digits and then reviews them every five to six years. Um, it covers approximately 98% of world trade. So you can assume that the country that you're dealing with also is involved in using HS codes. So knowing HS codes well um, and how they're constructed and how they are arranged is really vital for you to deal with international trade. The World Customs Organizations administers this HS code. And this is updated, as I said, um, about every five years normally, but you know there's some exceptions due to the COVID pandemic. It, it, it really serves as the foundation of every country's import and export classification system. Uh, broadly speaking, the products are categorized in three main levels. First, the chapters, a two digit uh, level chapter rules, or first two digits of the HS, that's the chapters. The headings is next, so you add another two digits, makes it four digits levels of the HS. Then you have the subheading, that's a six digit level of DHS, and that creates your six digit code. So two plus two plus two makes six. So let me give you an example of how that is structured. So you might have, say, well, why why don't we why don't we do household dishwashers? Yeah. So they might be classified under chapter 84. And that is actually, so if you go with chapters, the first two digits, 84, yeah, that's nuclear reactors, boilers, but also machines and mechanical appliances. So such as household, household dishwashers, mechanical appliances, so, so it fits there, but it's too broad of a category and we're constructing the HS code. So we're adding two digits and then we get to more specific granularity, notably dishwashing machines, machinery for uh, cleaning or uh, drying bottles and other containers, et cetera, et cetera. So that is a natural fit for our dish uh, household dishwashers. And then we go to the six digits, which is then a even more granular construct, and that would be household dishwashing machines. So given that we have a household dishwashing machine, that's logically where it then lives. As you can see, there is a strategic, a, a strategic or logic uh, a structure and a logic is what I wanted to say behind that. And that actually it has a name for itself. So that structure is called a nomenclature. It's a tax nomenclature. It's a logical system um, of, of how the commodity codes are constructed. It arranges numbers and codes in a logical way that makes sense. Rules are, of course, necessary to determine the order of these numbers and codes. So to because we need to make sure that these codes are universally then found and the rules apply to every party using this HS construct. So anywhere in the world, we should be getting to the same results. And 
In order to classify, as you can tell now, there are some questions that need to be answered. So for example, what should be the order of the product listings? If you are going to do a nomenclature, which product goes before which uh, product? You know, why is why is machinery in 84? What's in 83? What's in 82? So it needs to be a structure, and that's why we do this Norman nomenclature uh, uh, here. Um, so there's a lot we need to be thinking about, and the WCO has determined what the logical order of this is, and now we all follow it. In the end, it was decided that classification um, of the world's entire products would begin with natural organic items, which would be classified lower in the numbering system. Then technical and manufactural items, um, which are of a higher sophistication level, such as maybe your, your washing machine or the dishwasher, they would be in a higher um, in a higher numbering. So the higher the level of sophistication, the small the smaller the number of um, the, or, or the, the later it comes in the nomenclature. So, for example, one could argue that the Mona Lisa is one of the most sophisticated paintings in the world, highly valued. So therefore, maybe it should come almost at the end of the nomenclature because collect arts is unique, exists only once, and it requires a high level of sophistication. While maybe the live animal, the cow that is born, does it need any processing or any manufacturing? It is just born. So kind of in that way, the nomenclature is structured from least processing to most sophisticated processing and your product slots in there, uh, in, in between there. Now, often um, you are then asked to classify the products or this is where people like, like me come in. We help companies classify products um, and to make sure their commodity codes are correct because it is quite tricky at times. Um, businesses have an obligation to classify their products correctly according to the rules of the HS code and also th with their national requirements. And there is a famous sentence that I like to use here um, by the UK customs authorities. And, and I quote this, um, if you intend to move goods to and from the UK, it is essential that they're classified in order to identify the what duties and controls apply um, and to ensure the correct um, customs classification is obtained. Whether or not you have an agent who handles these customs entries on your behalf, you have a legal responsibility to ensure the correct customs classification is applied. Incorrect classification can lead to delays in clearing goods, overpayment of duty and possible penalties. So what does that mean? It means that the responsibility is primarily on you, the importer or the exporter. And of course, uh, people like like me, customs professionals, can help you find that code. Um, and, and it goes to a larger point that you need to be prepared um, or otherwise your goods may get stuck and might be fined and even confiscated. Using, for example, an outdated tariff can have significant consequences. If your code is no longer valid, your goods may not be cleared or could get stuck in customs. As a result, you may experience delays in reaching your customers. Additionally, providing an incorrect commodity code can lead to underpayment or overpayment of duty. And again, that has then administrative, at the very least, administrative consequences. And, you know, if, if for example, you are you're importing metals and you're declaring chocolate, um, any protective measure that the government may have may have wanted to take to ensure that you're not importing a certain product, if you're misdeclaring it, would go out of the window. Even especially if you're doing export items and you, you're prohibited from exporting certain metals to a certain country and you're simply declaring you're mixing the six and the nine, well, then you may now have garlic rather than metal sheets, for example. Um, and therefore, uh, you would be allowed to export the garlic, but you're not allowed to export the metal sheets. So by mixing and reversing it, you're making it worse. Um, and this can have quite severe consequences. So um, there you have it, a quick look at customs classification and what actually is the nomenclature, what is an example of an NHS code, what is an NHS code global construct, what are commodity codes, etc.
Now, I should let you know about certain cool developments. First of all, if you want to stay up to date with all the latest on custom classification, then please look at the links below because there is a collection of customs classification um, developments on our website. So go check that out. If you're interested in classification training with me, live classification training or on-demand pre-recorded one, then please check out our shop or our events page where you can book the live trainings and the shop where you can book the on-demand trainings. And if you have any specific queries about your products and you want us to classify them or help you get a binding ruling or anything of that sort, then just reach out to us. We offer a one hour free consultancy a session for everyone who wants to benefit from it. And again, details are on the website. Look, thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you soon at another video. Thanks. Bye.